Well, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Mike uh, McBride, and I'm actually out of the um, uh, Dean's office in an area that we call outreach and student recruitment. So our job is to actually uh, uh, connect with you as you're transitioning from either high school or community colleges to Arizona State University and um, assist you with the application, scholarships, financial aid, um, you know, questions on housing and that kind of thing. And then uh, get you sort of ready all the way up until, uh, you know, the first day of the semester and you're, you're sort of handed off to the faculty for your future uh, uh education here at ASU. And um, we're very lucky to have with us today, uh, Dr. Jennifer Becky, who is a professor uh, in engineering at the Polytechnic campus. And she uh, also, I believe, is the associate director for the entire school. So a lot of experience uh, in working with students, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. So uh, welcome, Dr. Becky. Thank you. Uh -huh. And so I'm just gonna go through a, a few slides really quickly and give you some context for, um, for the entire schools of engineering and then also kind of give you an idea if you have not been to the Polytechnic campus where it's located and, um, and some general information. So at Arizona State University, we have uh, 25 undergraduate programs in engineering and 44 graduate programs across two campus locations. And that also includes a number of students that are online. So this is actually a slide from last year. So we're actually, we've actually topped 25,000 students in terms of total uh, population. Uh, we're actually the largest um, school or college at ASU for students that are on campus. Um, but you can see uh, we have a number of students that are actually completing degrees completely online. And, um, and, and that's uh, roughly 7,000 students are, are, you wouldn't necessarily see them on either campus location, but uh, they, they could be like military, they could be in bases around the world, uh, ships, um, uh, taking classes and completing degrees um, uh, completely online. And you can see our incoming class for freshmen uh, this past year was uh, quite substantial with over 3,000 students. That also was the number uh, this past year. We are, we are a comprehensive uh, engineering uh, uh, schools and we are also a, a top research institution um, in, in the world for engineering. As a matter of fact, the university brings out in about $600 million each year in research expenditures and and the um, schools of engineering are responsible for roughly $150 million of that, that, those research dollars. So we'll talk today a little bit about how you might be able to get involved in some, some research yourself as an undergraduate um, uh, as well. So we have four campus locations in the Valley. If you've attended any of the admission sessions this week, you've probably gotten an introduction to, uh, to, to that. But where we position our two, um, our two campus locations that house the Fulton Schools of Engineering programs are at our Tempe and Polytechnic campus. We've done that for a variety of reasons, but one of the very important reasons is that East Valley corridor that you see there between Tempe and Polytechnic, we're separated by about 22 miles. Uh, many of our industry partners exist in that East Valley. So, you know, places like Intel, which by the way is about to expand by I think, what, $20 billion here in the next, uh, next four or five years. So really interesting there. Uh, Boeing, um, uh, they, they've got their, uh, their, their Apache helicopters that they're building out here in the East Valley. Honeywell um, uh, and numerous other companies, including Lucid Motors has just uh, developed a plan out in Casa Grande and I think Nicola uh, a little further south from there. So we're very lucky to have a, a substantial um, industry footprint in that in that East Valley, but we're also the fifth largest metropolitan area in the country right now, and we're the only research institution within that metro area. So we're really quite uh, lucky in terms of um, our, our professors connecting to industry to do research, and then our students also being able to connect on internships and other opportunities that we that we have available to you. Um, this final slide, I'll just show you real quickly here is, is a community slide. I think it's an important slide for you to understand. Um, we want you to participate as a student um, at ASU and take part in everything that, that our large comprehensive institution has to offer you. And you know, so if you're 
wanting to go to the football games uh, and you're at the Polytechnic campus, we, we actually uh, bus you over to those games and, uh, and then bring you back. Just make sure you catch that bus to come back <laughs> at, at, at night. But the, the university itself has over 500 clubs and organizations um, across the uh, four campus locations. And you can take part in any of those opportunities that, that we offer. Um, I know some of our students uh, even have like, they're in a ski club and they might go up to Flagstaff and ski and have, have fun, uh, musical organization. What I'd like you to think about in that context is, you know, the things that you've been doing at, at high school, maybe outside of the classroom that you'd like to continue to do. Uh, you can find uh, ASU is, is probably going to have some sort of uh, connection to whatever those interests are. But we're a smaller community with Fulton schools. So as you pursue your education, um, uh, going back to student organizations again, we have 60 clubs and organizations that are just within the Fulton Schools of Engineering. Many of them, uh, and Dr. Becky will show some of those clubs and organizations as we move along here, but uh, many of them having to do with your education in engineering. And the idea behind uh, student organizations and the so support services we have is to, uh, to help you understand that engineering needs to be a team sport. It's it's a, it's a, it's not for the faint-hearted, right? You got to get a lot of math and science, and 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 uh, and some really good professors teaching them, help helping you along the way. But you know, you're going to be better at some things than other students will be, and vice versa. And it's uh, really a good idea for us to help you connect with other students who you can work together with on uh, on projects and and your your school work along the way. And student organizations are a great way for you to do that. And then as you move into your school, and we're gonna talk about the Polytechnic School uh, today, you'll even have a smaller community that you're uh, connected to um, uh, that, that you'll participate with things just, just within your school uh, at, at Polytechnic. So, um, so, so know that, know that although we, we are a large institution, we have all kinds of ways to make it smaller for you. Uh, one of the primary places where our students live is Century Hall at, uh, at, at Polytechnic. Uh, so incoming freshmen live at Century. We also have a brand new residential hall that opened uh, this year called Lantana. And Lantana is, uh, is for students that are also maybe part of the Barrett Honors College. So if you're part of Barrett and you're an engineer, you're prob probably live in, in, in Barrett. And we're very lucky to have an associate dean, Tom Sugar, who, uh, who also is a professor of engineering at the Polytechnic campus who, who sort of runs Barrett for us. So big flavor of engineering in Barrett as well. So with that, I wanna turn it over to Dr. Becky and have her introduce um, uh, our staff and students that are here with us today. And I'll stop sharing and allow you to do your thing. Thank you, Dr. Becky. Thanks. So good morning. Um, I'll, I'll share my own slide deck in just a second, but I wanted to say we're glad to have you joining us today. I wanted to introduce the other two people that you can see on the screen. Um, so you'll see Lindsay Morris, and she's a member of our first year academic success team here at Poly, um, and her title is a retention coordinator. So she'll be here to help us answer questions from an advising perspective. And then we have Shannon McBreen, who's a student in our engineering program. Shannon, are you a senior this year? Uh, kind of. <laughs> I'm, <Kind> of. Okay. <laughs> I'm in my fourth year, but I'm in my junior level classes. Okay, great. So um, Shannon's going to, when I finish talking, she's going to share a little bit about her um, experiences here. And she's been involved in all kinds of great things while she's been here. And so she has a lot to share with us. Uh, so with that, my goal in, in the slides that I'll share is to give you a feeling for the programs that we offer in the Polytechnic School, in the Fulton Schools of Engineering. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the research activities that are going on, some of the campus life activities, which include the clubs. And since you can't be on campus right now, because we're at a virtual event, we'll have some photos of campus to show you. Um, so that's, that's the plan. And let me share my screen and make sure, can you all, looking good, everybody can see it? Okay, great. So uh, we, the undergraduate degree programs that we have in the Poly School span quite a few uh, different and exciting areas. So we have two different um, degrees, engineering and manufacturing engineering that are accredited by ABET, which is the board that accredits engineering degrees. We have a human systems engineering degree. We have environmental resource management, graphic information technology, IT, um, and then technological entrepreneurship. And I'm gonna walk you through a little bit um, of what all those degrees are. Um, the picture that you see, this is actually, um, 
a student who graduated in one of the, the first cohorts of the engineering programs that we had here at Poly. And you see uh, them working in the machine shop in the simulator building. And so one of the hallmarks of the programs in the Poly School is that across all the programs, we, we value hands-on learning. Um, and this picture is just one um, that illustrates that. So this is an actual class where you learn how to use the mills and the lathe. So first I'll talk to you about um, the engineering program. Um, so our, the engineering degree is a general engineering degree. It's you don't, you get a degree in engineering and you select from one of four concentrations. And so the concentrations are automotive, electrical, mechanical, and robotics. Um, across all those four concentrations, the first two years are the same. And so they're foundational courses, there are project courses every semester in that engineering degree program. Um, and then the third year is an opportunity to specialize in technical courses associated with your concentration. And the fourth year, there's some of that. And also the students come together in a year long capstone experience that's more interdisciplinary across the capstone. Um, the pictures you see, so the picture on the left, um, that's from actually a student team when <clears throat> I was teaching a class uh, this, a sophomore level engineering design class. And the project for that semester was to design um, something for elementary school teachers to use in teaching a scientific concept of their choice. And so this team met with the instructor and we work with the, the school that's actually on campus here at ASU. Um, so they met with the instructor, found out what her needs were, what she wanted the students to teach, what she wanted the students to learn, and then they built um, a hands-on activity. This is a maglev train, so it's a, a levitating train that's got magnets on either end, and it teaches the, the children about magnetics. Uh, so this was at the showcase at their school. And on the right, you'll see a member of the Desert Wave Robotics team, which I have another slide later. And so they, this has been a very successful um, all or mostly female robotics team that's competed nationally and internationally with their designs. That's an extracurricular activity. So one last thing to sort of highlight was the engineering program. Uh, for many years, uh, we had an eco car project, which is a highlight from the automotive engineering concentration. Um, so in that project, students had the chance to redesign a Chevy Camaro um, with a particular level of performance. It was a really exciting project. Um, there's still a lot of activity here around automotive engineering. We have a lot of clubs that focus on this Baja car, SAE car. Uh, so there's lots of chance to get involved in automotive engineering. And this is one of the concentrations that attracts a, a quite a few students. <clears throat> we have a manufacturing engineering degree. Uh, and this is a standalone discipline specific degree in manufacturing engineering. And it's one of not too many of these around the country. Um, so in this program, you share almost all of the first two years with the engineering degree we just talked about. And then in the third and fourth year are specialized around topics related to manufacturing. So you'll see some pictures here. Um, the one over on the right-hand side of the screen is a 3D printer. And so students in, we have 3D printers on campus in the maker spaces and students can all access those whether you're in manufacturing or not. Um, in the manufacturing engineering program, students learn a little bit more about the material science behind additive and subtractive manufacturing, um, consider the global structure of manufacturing, how to make one thing, how to make many things. Um, you'll see this person in the, in the middle here, this is Dr. Bate, he's one of the instructors whose research and teaching aligns with manufacturing. Human systems engineering um, is a degree program that tries to understand how can we make things better for people to use. And the work and the, what you learn and the application of that spans all kinds of different industries. Uh, right now, there's a new concentration coming forward for that in user experience. And so not everybody has to choose that concentration, but the idea of a concentration is relevant because it shows up on your transcript as something formal. So it's a formal concentration in user experience. So if you graduate, um, from with a degree in human systems engineering, there's all kinds of different things you can do um, from being a human factors engineer to a research psychologist. Uh, I'll show you later, one of our faculty members has a research area that um, focuses both on sports and um, I'll leave it at that at sports. Um, so it's a degree, uh, we have a great faculty who 
are very passionate about what they're doing. You'll see a research lab down here. This is Dr. Nancy Cook's research lab. One of the things that happens in this lab um, is that they simulate military operations and the people on the headsets have different roles in that military operation. And the idea is to try to understand how those teams can most effectively accomplish the missions that they're trying to do. So she has an interesting focus on um, teams and team performance. ERM or Environmental Resource Management, uh, we're interested here with the scientific and technical, technological aspects. So things like sustainability, health, resource, resource conservation, um, you can go on to work for the government, nonprofits. Um, if you're interested in global challenges, this is a great program for you. GIT um, and graphics information technology. You, I, I like this picture, so it's catching my attention. You can be the person who designs this wall mural um, that's prevalent in one of the buildings where the GIT program is housed. And so this student here, Hunter, you can see what a lovely and important part of our, our actual physical infrastructure this is, and he had the chance to design it in the GIT program. So this is where we do they have everything from photography to print media to web design, videography, um, and there's also a recently approved concentration in user experience through the GIT program too. I have one more slide I wanna show you. As a student in GIT, um, you also have the opportunity to put your learning into action right away on campus. So this is a commercial print lab that serves ASU and its partners, and it's staffed primarily by GIT students. And so while you're in the GIT program, you have an opportunity to work here, practice what you're doing um, for real customers. And you know, faculty, I have used the print and imaging lab many times myself for projects. And so I think it's a really great um, opportunity to have right there on campus to do what you're learning and sort of right away. Uh, the TEM program or Technological Entrepreneurship and Management um, <clears throat> this is a program that has a very, very strong tie with industry. You can see the faculty really value that they have a lot of industry experience in private and public organizations. They have experience with startups, um, going, building up organizations, helping organizations ramp down when they need to. Um, it's STEAM focused and it's really a place that's where the ASU spirit of entrepreneurship really comes through in this program. Uh, there's flexibility in the choices you, you need to take, it's interdisciplinary, um, and it's, it's, I want to emphasize again that it has a very, we have a strong partnership with industry in all our programs, and this has a particularly strong focus in that. Uh, so if, if you're interested in entrepreneurship, management, all the things that take to make an entre entrepreneurial endeavor, be it for-profit, nonprofit, social good, uh, this is a great program. Information technology is one of our fastest growing programs. Um, IT helps make everything we do happen. Without IT, we wouldn't be able to be on Zoom right now. So it's, it's the formal definition you can see here. It's the movement of information, retrieving, managing, securing, and analyzing sets of data. So this program covers everything from um, how to set up the physical IT infrastructure to the data that flows through it and understanding data mining as a service to, to uh, information technology, areas of focus. So you can choose, these aren't formal concentrations, they are areas of focus um, around information systems or network and computer system security. Uh, they have a strong online component as well as an in-person component to this program. Dr. Becky, uh, just as we're finishing up on programs, could you, there's one question in here and the question is, is software engineering one of the poly engineering majors? So software engineering is, located at the Polytechnic campus. So there, that's, it's a great question. So at the Polytechnic campus where we are, um, there is, we have the programs that are in the Polytechnic school, which are the things that I'm talking to you about. And then also on campus, we have software engineering, which is part of a different school within the Fulton Schools of Engineering, but is located here on campus. And so, um, Yes, it's a poly school program and it's a Fulton program, but it's not part of the polytechnic school. Thanks for the, the question. Uh, and if, if you need more clarity, feel free to pipe back into the chat. So earlier you heard a little bit about Barrett. And so I wanna say just, just a little bit more. I've got three slides in here that are about Barrett. So Barrett is, uh, 
the Honors College that ASU offers. And if you're an, in Barrett, the Honors College, you're also getting a degree in uh, whatever discipline or program is your choice. So in the context of the poly school here, we have a large number of, of poly students who also choose to be students in, in Barrett, the Honors College. And as Mike mentioned earlier, um, in fact, one of the engineering faculty members who I'll show you his picture later, as far as his research, he's the Associate Dean of Barrett here at Poly, Dr. Tom Sugar. And so one of the things that Barrett prides itself on is providing um, a, a smaller feeling community within what can be a large community at ASU. And so you, as a Barrett student, you receive honors credits for coursework and special projects that you do. Um, you have Barrett has a, a, a residential camp place on campus, Lantana, which I'll show you an image of in just a second. There's Barrett faculty. Um, that's the residential community that mentioned also. Um, there's also access to particular social events, mentoring, they have a whole community. And so there you are still able to apply to be in Barrett for fall 2021. Uh, the website there and the contact information is there for you. Uh, the new residence hall that just opened this past fall, Lantana, um, there, they have classrooms, labs, a social lounge, the faculty offices for Barrett faculty are located in there. So these are some images um, of that new residential facility that's on campus. Um, and also housed within the Barrett Honors College is a program called Global Resolve, which was started in 2006 by Mark Henderson and Brad Rogers, who are one is emeritus already, one is soon to be emeritus faculty from the engineering program. Um, and the idea of Global Resolve was to allow our undergraduate and graduate engineering students, and, and it's expanded well beyond engineering at this point, uh, to do social projects, to use their engineering skills to help developing nations build sustainable solutions that they can have as businesses for themselves. So students in the engineering program, um, and now it's again, it's housed within Barrett and it's broader than engineering. So students who are participating in Global Resolve work in interdisciplinary teams to solve problems for particular countries. And the, you can see it crosses many continents, Asia, Africa, North and South America. Uh, they do the projects, they design them, and then they actually go to those countries to help those countries uh, turn those solutions into viable business opportunities in those local communities. So it's a really exciting opportunity. Um, the images that you see here are from one of the earlier projects that took place uh, in Ghana. Um, so it, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great program. And again, I wanna, I wanna be, I, I reached out to Dr. Brad Rogers, who's one of the founders, and he wanted to make sure I communicated that it is housed within Barrett and all poly students are welcome to participate in Global Resolve, not only students in Barrett. So uh, one last thing about, about sort of degree programs and formal areas of study is that we at the Poly School and across ASU and across Fulton and specifically in Poly, we have quite a few four plus one programs. And what a four plus one program is, is it's an opportunity for you to get a master's degree in one extra year beyond your bachelor's degree. And so you, share credit hours between the last year of your undergraduate degree and the first year of your graduate degree. And so then that fifth year becomes sort of like the second year of your master's degree. And so when you leave after one extra year, you leave with both a bachelor's and a master's degree. Um, it requires you to have maintained a, at least a 3.2 or 3.5 for some programs GPA in your undergraduate program. And then you can apply to, to have this opportunity. And it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity that quite a few students take advantage of. So transitioning to something that probably feels even extra important after a year of, of social isolation from, from the pandemic. So we do have a, a growing and vibrant student life here on campus. It's understandably with necessary reason been, been a little lighter in the past year. Uh, but you'll see these images are of students at the football game and then students on campus in front of our, our student union. You can see ASU's charter in the background, um, which I will point out is, is sort of the fundamental set of values that we all share here about having ASU be a university that's measured by whom we include. 
um, and not who we exclude. So that's something that I'm proud of about being associated with ASU. Uh, there's a couple of, we have a number of clubs on campus and I'm just gonna highlight just a couple of them. These are, this is a previous image from the Women in Science and Engineering Club. It's an active group on campus um, that welcomes women and men students from all across different programs on campus. We do a lot of activities. Um, it's a great organization. Another active club on campus is the Photography Club. And so these are, these are not like images from this past year, but they're images from, from the year before when we had a lot, a lot of activities like this on campus that we're hoping to build back up um, in, this, in this coming year. So the Photography Club, the Women in Science and Engineering Club, um, we have, I mentioned before that we have the SAE Baja car. And this is a project where every year the students build a car and they take it to a bunch of different races around and they, they, they race it against other teams from other universities. In 2018, they placed ninth out of 98 teams in a national competition. So that was, that's, that's a very exciting thing. And it, I will tell you, I was teaching several of these students in 2018 when they were building this. Um, it was a major passion. This was uh, a really exciting opportunity for these students and they spent a lot of their, their time and energy and um, on this. So if it's something that's exciting to you, I think my point is you'll find a community of other people who find it exciting and it's an, it's an opportunity that you can really get your teeth into and, and get excited about and, and do something fun. Similarly, I mentioned earlier that we had the Desert Wave Robotics Club. <coughs> Excuse me. And so, oh, I went. this this is again this is a picture from 2019. Um, this is of the Robotics Club. Uh, the person, um, the the man sort of standing in the back is a is a faculty member in our engineering program, uh, Dan Frank. And they, this club has been mostly all women. I don't want to, I'm not hundred percent sure if it's been all women, but it's mostly been all women's robotics team. They've done amazingly well, uh, winning uh, high rankings in all kinds of competitions. This is a 22nd place in the annual RoboSub competition. So this is their, you can see the RoboSub that they designed here in 2019. I believe they placed very highly in the last year as well. And I don't, I don't remember right off the top of my head what their place was, but they consistently place highly. So it's another opportunity to engage with people who are interested in doing similar things to what you're doing and, and having a goal and a competition to sort of motivate that activity and some great faculty who are really invested in supporting the efforts as well. Uh, I mentioned, I wanted to show you a couple shots of our campus. Uh, so you can see the, the building on the left. Um, it looks like it's the Santan building. Um, we have several buildings on campus that look like this. The campus, uh, I believe the poly campus is also an arboretum. It's a lovely place. I know you, you, you aren't physically here, uh, but it's, it's a beautiful uh, place with all kinds of plants. And we have a, a lively set of animals who are on campus as well. Uh, you can see that when, when we have a uh, Pre and post COVID, we, we have you know, students around in, enjoying all kinds of different activities. Uh, this is another image of Century Hall, which is the residential facility for freshmen on campus that's separate from uh, Lantana Hall, which is the brand new Barrett uh, residential facility. So you can see in, in the dorm, this is on the bottom right, you'll see a picture of what the inside of the dorm room looks like. And on the upper right, you'll just see a, the students in the lounge having a chance to just have some fun. Uh, on, on the left, you see them going out to class or, or wherever. Um, okay, so the last part of, of the poly school and, and life here on campus that I wanna talk to you about is about research. And that's something that I'm sure you're aware of that faculty members, so in the poly school, you'll interact with faculty who are wonderful colleagues and wonderful teachers and they really enjoy what they do, all the parts of their job. And so faculty have an important part of their job that relates to teaching in the classroom. And they also have an important part of their job that relates to creating new knowledge through research and mentoring students at the undergrad and graduate level to be able to participate in that research and create their own findings. And so one of the, way that the ways that the Fulton Schools of Engineering promotes this opportunity 
for students to engage in research across all levels is with the FURY program. And FURY stands for um, Fulton Undergraduate Research Initiative, as you can see. And so when students participate in FURY, you, you apply to this program, um, you develop an idea with a faculty member. So typically, often faculty will have ideas. They're looking to have students, undergraduate students engage with them and they'll put forth their ideas for research. Students can also come up with their own ideas. That's absolutely welcome. Uh, and so you do this independent research. It can be lab-based, any kind, I'll show you three slides of three very different types of research in, in just a minute and you'll see those three were chosen specifically to try to illustrate the very wide variety of research that exists within the Poly School. So you participate in, in research, um, do the research, uh, attend workshops to support it. And then in the end, you participate in a research symposium. And I know for some of these projects, the undergraduate students actually also turn them into papers that are presented at conferences. And so that's a really exciting opportunity for anybody uh, wonderful to demonstrate that in a, in a job interview, also wonderful to demonstrate on a graduate uh, school application, and also just wonderful to, to do and to create knowledge is a very exciting thing. So the next thing is I'm going to show you three different research programs from three very research active faculty within the Polytechnic School. So the first um, you see the woman in the back in the maroon polo shirt. That's Dr. Brooke Coley. She's a faculty member in our engineering program. Um, and she runs a lab called the Space Lab. And it stands, space stands for, you can see there, shifting perceptions, attitudes, and cultures in engineering. And so the big picture in her, her, the big picture goal in her research is about making engineering a place where everybody feels welcome. So you might be aware that historically, engineering has been dominated by, uh, in, in terms of enrollment by white men. And there's a lot of attention into understanding how we can make engineering more welcoming um, to, to others because there's so many solutions that require so many different types of people uh, to, to, so that we can get better solutions. And so Dr. Coley's lab focuses on this. And what this particular picture shows here is um, in her research group and these, the two people, women in the gray polos are both PhD students in the engineering education program within the Poly School. And this woman wearing the goggles, her name's Katrina, she is practicing a virtual reality um, experience. And in that virtual reality experience, people are understanding what it's like to engage in an engineering classroom and with, with faculty and communities as someone different than themselves. And so virtual reality allows that. And the goal is to, in this research is to build empathy around that. So there's, there's research in like that, which is wonderful and truly important. And then we have research also wonderful and truly important. This is Dr. Tom Sugar in the yellow polo here. Um, and what his research emphasis is in, has been in wearable robotics. And so you'll see a couple different things here. One of the things he did uh, earlier on before this picture was a robotic ankle. So he designed what you see here is a wearable jetpack. And so the idea is whoever wears this jetpack, um, the, the strain of carrying things that, that are heavy is lighter. And so it's actually, you see the person running up here because the goal of this device is to actually help you run faster and experience less strain when you're running. So we have a, a quite active group of faculty who do research in robotics and among them um, is Dr. Tom Sugar, who again, we've mentioned several times is also the Associate Dean of Barrett here on campus. So there's research in how to make engineering a more inclusive place for all people. There's research on robotics. These are just a sample, but they're chosen to be a diverse sample. And then the third one I'm going to show is research from the Perception and Action Lab. And the gentleman you see in the in the window there is um, Dr. Rob Gray. And so what his research does is he tries to understand how people who are performing a task use the information that their brain is receiving to execute the the physical activities that are associated with that. And he has application um, in three specific areas I mentioned earlier that he also does quite a bit with sports. And this is an example of the complex action of driving. If you think about how much information we have to take in when we're driving and we have to translate that into to physical activity that we're doing to stay safe on the road, that's, that's a lot. It's kind of amazing how we do that. So he studies 
um, how that happens in his research lab. Uh, so those are three very different um, types of research. And again, almost all the faculty uh, engage in some kind of scholarship and research activity. Um, these, are, these are three, three specific examples. So that, that was the end of the formal part of, of my talk. Um, I want to, I'm going to turn it over to Shannon here in just a second. I have this slide to, this is probably a picture, an older picture of Shannon. Um, and I'll, I'll turn it over to her and let her tell you uh, about her experiences and then we'll open it up for any other questions that you might have. Thank you, Dr. Becky. Um, so real quick, before I get started on myself, um, uh, we just have a question and um, in the Q&A box that said, are these clubs only on the Polytechnic campus? Can Tempe students participate in them as well? Um, so the, all the clubs that um, Dr. Becky mentioned are based on the Polytechnic campus. Like that's typically like where they host their meetings, um, but anyone can participate. It doesn't matter what campus you're on. Um, and even if I'm in two of those clubs, um, Women in Science and Engineering and Polyphilo Club, um, and obviously all the meetings have been on Zoom this year. So it's been really awesome getting to meet students. Um, a lot of students from the Tempe campus that have been joining us um, and moving forward, we have a lot of activities where it's like, especially for photo club, even if you can't come to the meetings which are on campus, um, we do outings like at least a couple of times a semester where we go to the botanical gardens or the wonder spaces, which is in Scottsdale or to Sedona, or, like, we take trips and so, Obviously, those aren't at Poly, so if you didn't want to drive out to Poly and you wanted to meet somewhere else, um, we more than welcome that. Um, yeah, okay, so then on to me. Um, I'm majoring in electrical systems engineering at the Polytechnic campus. Um, I also have two minors, one in business and one in design studies. And yeah, like they said, I'm very involved on campus. Um, I got a job right at the beginning of my freshman year, um, actually. Shortly before classes started, um, there's, uh, hopefully you guys have heard of E2 Camp. Um, E2, it's for all the engineering students um, within Fulton, Poly and Tempe. Um, they do it every year, it's really awesome. And it's really, it's a good way to make connections. Um, like I said, that's how I got my job. My, um, my former supervisor, Maggie, was there doing something else. And she literally walked up to my table and was like, hey, does anyone want a job? And then gave a, we gave her our email and she sent us an email to apply and it worked out really well. Um, I love my job at the advising office. I still work there. Um, I no longer work at the front desk, but now I work Lindsay as my um, supervisor with the first year academic success team. Um, and yeah, so what, what else do I do? I started, kind of started Women in Science and Engineering on the Polytechnic campus a few years ago because um, it kind of had existed and then gone away and I brought it back. Um, I'm in the photography club. Um, I also work for the Luminosity Lab, um, which is not just at Poly, um, it's mostly on Tempe actually, but it's an interdisciplinary lab um, with not just engineering students, but engineering and business and design and literally everyone. And they do a lot of really cool projects, um, but like both with corporations and with a lot of nonprofits. Um, yeah, I could talk about Poly forever. So, um, Definitely put some questions in the Q&A. Um, yeah, like I said, I work on campus. I lived on campus for two years. Um, oh, I did study abroad. Um, love study abroad. There's multiple different kind of programs you want to you can do if you want to. Um, if you just want to do something short, they have summer programs that are like two weeks or a month or two months. Um, but there's also um, I also I did one of those, and then I also did a semester long exchange program in Australia. Um, let me see this question. When can students get involved in research? Do many freshmen get involved? Great question. Yes, you can get involved in research pretty much straight away at ASU. Um, maybe a semester that yeah, you probably have to get to know people. Or Becky hopefully can speak to this more, but I know Fury. I'm pretty sure you can start that your sophomore year, um, which is how most students start research at ASU, but all the professors are so kind and so willing to talk to students um, and like they want you to get involved. So if you see a professor who's doing something interesting, like go to their office hours, go talk to them um, and they can help you get involved. In the, in the chat, uh, Shannon, one, stu one student's asking you, what made you get into your program? How did you find your way into your particular program? 
Yeah, so I actually started in the mechanical systems program um, at the Polytechnic campus um, because I, I wanted to be in a more hands-on program. And that's what I had heard about Poly. Um, I was born and raised in Phoenix, the whole family is Sun Devils. So everyone I know goes to ASU pretty much. And did a lot of research on the programs and I, I knew I wanted to be mechanical engineering because it's very broad and you can do a lot of things with it. Um, and then around like early in my junior year and when I started getting, um, sorry, there's a dog crawling up by me right now. <laughs> hi, hi, honey. Um, um, early in my junior year, um, when I was really getting into like the meat of the mechanical classes, I realized that it just like wasn't as interesting as I thought, wasn't something I really wanted to spend the rest of my life doing. Um, but because of the way the program is set up, um, like Dr. Becky said, the first two years for no matter what your concentration is, the first two years are the same. Um, so what's really nice about that is you get a taste of all the concentrations. Like you take a mechanical class, an electrical, a manufacturing and a software. Um, and so I kind of thought about it and I was like, oh man, like I really, I really liked that electrical class. Like I want to get more into that. Um, and so that's what I switched to. And um, I've really, I've just really enjoyed it. Um, like we keep saying, everything is super hands-on. So I literally right now, I can show you, like I'm, I'm building circuits every single week, learning how to code and learning how to use different types of components. This is my current thing that I have got to get working before the end of the day today. Um, that was really nice and and you don't have to stick within your major so obviously I do a lot of um, electrical stuff with my concentration but I also took um, the manufacturing class Dr. Becky mentioned earlier with where you're in a lab um, learning how to use the lathes and the mills um, I took that my sophomore year that was probably one of the most fun classes I took at ASU because um, it was like every Friday all day Friday I just stayed in the lab and got to work with metal and make, I made like a little um, a vice, like a little tiny vice for myself. And yeah, um, sorry, I'm trying to read. Yeah, there's a couple other questions. So is there in-person classes for fall 2021? Um, the answer, the answer is yes. If there are, is there, Mike, you looked like you were gonna answer that. Is there? Uh, it's a, yeah, there's a, I'll, what I'll put in the chat is, uh, is our link to our, our COVID website where there's a message from our provost that announces that our plan is to go uh, back to learning mode one, which is uh, full, full immersion, um, sort of back to normal, barring any unforeseen circumstances that might arise, but uh, it's, it's looking real good for that. And um, we're really excited about that too. And I'm sure Shannon is and, as well. well yeah. Uh, and Go ahead. I was just going to say, just as one one uh, reference point right now, students still um, can attend class in person right now as well. And so, you know, I teach a class right now and some of the students come to the classroom and teach and, and for, for learning and some join on Zoom. And so um, at ASU, there's actually we've never stopped allowing students to come in person should they want, you know, there's safety precautions and everything, of course, that goes with that. But so that's and then I'll, I'll, Shannon, I'll hand over to you about the SWE chapter. So for those of you who are listening who don't know, SWE is the Society of Women Engineers. So there's a question, is there a chapter at Poly? Yeah, um, so there's not specifically a Poly chapter, um, but I do know a lot of um, Polytechnic students who attend the Tempe chapter. Um, I know I, I talked about WISE a little bit earlier. WISE is somewhat similar to SWE um, and that like obviously we a lot of us are women in engineering but we also have um, women in other areas of STEM so lots of like aviation and biological sciences students um, and we don't have like necessarily the big umbrella that SWE has um, so you know um, definitely pros for both of them so but there isn't a specific poly chapter Mm -hmm. um, and then Emily also asked, how realistic is it to take the shuttle and take some classes at Tempe when you're based at Poly? Um, that's a little bit of a complicated question because we definitely do have students do that. Um, I know lots of people who take classes at both campuses um, and the shuttle, okay, the shuttle part is awesome. Like the shuttle literally runs all day, every day. Um, and there's one that specifically goes between Poly and Tempe. And I think it comes like at least once an hour, maybe twice an hour. Um, so as far as getting to the other campus, it's super easy. Um, for taking classes at the other campus, 
really the biggest thing is you just gotta make, to make sure and talk to your advisor. Um, for all the programs that are based at the Polytechnic campus, you can take all of those classes at Poly. Um, some of them are only offered at Poly, especially the very major specific ones. Um, but if you wanted to take like your chemistry or your physics or a mat, like a general studies class, um, lots of students go and do that at Tempe, um, especially if they live in the Tempe area. Um, or if you have, like I have, I mentioned I have two minors, one in business and one in design studies. Um, and those are both technically based at the Tempe campus. Um, I have been fortunate enough that I could do all of them online um, just because either that's how they were offered or because COVID allowed me to take classes online that I typically would need to be in person for. Um, so you absolutely can take classes at Tempe. Just make sure you talk to your advisor um, and so that you're staying on track with your degree program. Okay. And someone asked a housing question, am I allowed to have a room by myself? Um, does being in Barrett help with that? So I don't know if I'm the most qualified person to answer this question. I, I do know some people um, that lived in a room by themselves um, for like allergy purposes. Like I had a friend who was very allergic to peanuts and she had her own room in Century. Um, I have not seen Lantana in person um, because I like haven't been on campus very much this year, but I'm pretty sure that how that works is you they're like suites so there's like three three people have their own room and then they share like a living room um so and michael mcbride just added a link so i think that because of the coronavirus they probably have more flexibility does anyone else have anything to say about this uh, um <laughs> so so i haven't been able to we've kind of kept the the halls uh, secluded from the general public uh, not that I, I guess i'm part of the university so i'm not but but uh but in any event, uh, they're, they're, I haven't been able to look into Lantana, but, but in general, Barrett tries to have some single housing situations for particular circumstances. Um, so you may be able to do that. What I would encourage you to do is contact the uh, housing office and, um, and, and they can tell you more about that. And I can put that, that link in the, in, the, in the website. During admitted student days, there may be some housing um, programs, webinars that are happening um, you know, in the next little while. So you might wanna check your admissions admitted student day uh, page and, and see if there's some more workshops on that. One thing I should have said at the beginning, you know, as Shannon was talking about taking classes on different campus locations, you know, although we're separated by mileage, 22 miles between the two campus locations, philosophically, you can think of it like the next building over, right? It's a, uh, everybody has the same ID card. Everybody uh, graduates with the same ASU diploma, Fulton Schools of Engineering uh, diploma. We're all guided by the same Dean, Kyle Squires, uh, Dr. Beck, you showed a picture of him at one point, I think, in the slides there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, and all the programs are, are you know, ABET accredited. Uh, so, so it's, it's, uh, it's just a, what, what we've done in Phoenix is we don't have a lot of, uh, like I said, we're the only research institution within the fifth largest metropolitan area. So what we wanted to do is expand our footprint in the Valley so we can offer higher education opportunities to as many students as possible in the state of Arizona and outside of the state of Arizona. Uh, the only difference really you find between the two campuses is that there are different programs offered on the two different campus locations. So uh, maybe that helps a, a little bit. I don't know that we had a chance to, uh, to talk to uh, Lindsay at all. I was wondering, Lindsay, if you might, since these are admitted students for the most part, how are we handling registration for the fall? Um, <laughs> Yeah, so um, one of the things that you'll do uh, as you go through your new student experience, there's a couple steps that you'll do first. Um, and uh, once I think it's once you get past step three, I believe you'll register for a new student experience event. So it is a webinar. We are hosting those virtually and it is um, where you get to um, spend a little time with your advising team. Um, there is a college welcome. So uh, again, it's, we're welcoming you to the campus, but we're also welcoming you to your college and then um, your school. So um, part of that is, um, like I uh, uh, said before, is I'm a, an advisor for our first year team. So you have, uh, there are three of us, technically four, I should say, um, and you have an assigned advisor. So depending on your major, 
um, you will see either my name or another advisor's name listed on your My ASU page. So it's really nice because it does offer you kind of that one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, directly who to go to should you have questions. But prior to your new student experience event, um, you will uh, answer some questions. Let us know if you've taken any a AP exams. Uh, dual enrollment. And based on that information, we build your schedule. So by the time you uh, come to see us, you already are registered um, for the fall semester. Um, and then obviously we work with you all summer long. So if there's things that come up, if you um, scored higher on an AP exam than you originally thought, we'll help you adjust your schedule. Um, and the nice thing is, is that um, we spend time with you all summer long. You get lots of emails and appointments from us. And then we are with you um, through your entire first year. So we help you register for your term two and term three courses. So um, you get to spend lots of time with us. It's pretty fun. We get to know you. We're in class with you in ASU 101. Um, so again, it's, uh, it's really nice to uh, develop that relationship with your advisor. Um, there's one question, uh, Emma, I am visiting Poly campus and Tempe campus in April with my parents. Are we allowed to use the shuttle to get to the other campus campuses for the guided tour? Or do we need to provide our own transportation? Um, I mean, I get on the shuttle quite frequently and, and nobody asked me <laughs> any questions. So uh, I'm sure you can do that if you want. I, I did put the shuttle website in the chat there. So you can kind of check out what the schedules are for, for the, the shuttle. They're typically like hourly. They might not be, um, you know, they're probably not letting folks sit next to each other. So they've probably got some of the seats sort of, you know, held away RSVP. So, so uh, we're keeping distant, but um, I think that's fine. <clears throat> there was a question about parking at Poly. So is, is, is it difficult to get a permit? Um, the answer to is it difficult to get a permit is, is no, you can get a permit. Um, there are times of day where the parking lots are full. So it would be, it would be untrue to say that that wasn't the case. Um, there are many times right now, <laughs> right now you can park wherever you want, but when campus is in full, in full swing, uh, you can get a parking permit. They, they, they're, I don't want to say how much they cost because I think I might say it wrong. They're in the neighborhood of several several hundred dollars, um, and you can park in a number of different lots on campus. Uh, getting the permit is easy. Uh, parking many times of day, many days of week is no problem. There are some specific high traffic times of the week where it can be hard if you show up at the same time that everybody else is showing up to campus for class. Um, there are some high traffic times. Tuesday, Thursdays are big class days. So uh, bring your lunch, <laughs> make sure you pack some snacks, don't leave because it will be difficult to find a spot when you come back. Um, Shannon, there was one other question before, I know we're, we've got five minutes, but it might be a great, um, a great way to, to wrap up is that, uh, what are some of the challenges you faced in your first year or how did you work through those? Oh man, um, I think just adjusting to college life was really different. Um, I've always been a very independent person, um, so I was really excited to get to go and you know move out of my parents' house and live on my own and kind of figure things out for myself. Um, learning how to live with a roommate was really interesting. Um, my roommate, um, um, she was very nice. Um, we definitely had kind of our tussles with each other though um just from like not seeing eye to eye on things and sometimes it can be difficult when you live in like a very close space with another person that you don't know that well um so that was definitely a challenge um probably I would say like getting involved is not okay getting involved is not hard at ASU there's so many things to do but I in high school, I was hyper involved. Like I literally, my senior year, I took six AP classes. I was at marching band, I was at Girl Scouts. Like I was a very, very busy person. So when I um, when I came to ASU, I was like, I want a year. I just want a year off. I want to focus on school. I want to focus on my job. Um, 
and then I was really bored <laughs> um, and I really wish that I had gotten more involved my first year um, but I didn't let that regret stop me um, in sophomore year I got way more involved and um, I had made a, a lot a lot of friends my first year um, so that really helped me um, you know find some good clubs and like get get to know people um, also Fulton Ambassadors is something that I joined my sophomore year that I'm really grateful um, for because I um, it, it helped me learn a lot more about Fulton and get to know other students the same interests as me and also um, I, I get to come talk to you guys at events like this and talk about my experiences which I really enjoy um, yeah I'm trying to think what other challenges that was it. Just get, just getting used to living by yourself and being responsible. Like no one's, no one's gonna sit there and like tell you, be like, hey, like you have class in five minutes. You gotta go do. Like you have to do that for yourself. And um, so, fighting the resist, fighting the urge to just like sleep through class, <laughs> which you really absolutely should not do. Maybe you um, said this earlier, but how how did you get a student job? Um. Yeah, I think I said earlier. Um, I was at E two camp. Um, my um, former supervisor, um, the lady who hired me ultimately um, was there and she just said, hey, we're hiring. If anyone wants a job, give me your email address and I'll send you the application. Um, it's also, there's tons of on-campus jobs for students. Um, and honestly, I think getting, if you wanna get a job, getting an on-campus job is a really good option um, because they, for starters, they understand that you're a student and like school's gonna come first. Like they're a lot more willing to help you work around your class schedule, um, which obviously changes every semester. Um, and it's, there's just lots of support, lots of resources at the university. Um, you can go online and don't know the exact website. I think you, if you just Google like ASU job search, um, mm -hmm. you can find the website really easily and um, sort by like campus um, or part-time or whatever. All student jobs are part-time but hourly. um yeah, yeah hourly um and yeah it's really it's that's the best thing I did my first year was get a job on campus mm -hmm. um, it gave me a lot of like really important connections um I'm just plugging that uh, student uh, employment search website on there for everybody so I guess one one thing to I'll just I want to add one quick thing before we we end we end time Mike Mike I'll hand it over to you to close us out in a second uh, is just that I want to reiterate that community is very important to us at the Poly campus. We pride ourselves on and take very seriously um, creating a, a space where we care about each other. Um, you'll find that the faculty take that seriously, um, the students take it seriously, the staff take it seriously. And it's, it's something that um, in the Poly school, we just, we really want to be known for that. We want people to leave and feel like we knew who they were and they were here and it mattered. And so um, that, that's something that I'm proud of about our program here and something that I hope you find when you come. So uh, I'll, Mike, I'll hand it, hand it over to you. And Yeah, and I'll, I'll reiterate that too. Uh, I was just given a tour for a young man yesterday on campus and, and although I hadn't scheduled things with the faculty necessarily, I was stopped three times by faculty members who just wanted to introduce themselves to yeah. the family <laughs> that was visiting. So it's, it's a, it, it is a really cool environment in the way Dr. Becky just explained. So thank you all very much for joining us today. And uh, thank you panelists, especially our student Shannon, who's yep. probably quite busy this time of year. Um, and, uh, and Lindsay as well with all the things coming up with orientation. So uh, appreciate uh, all of that. You guys have a great semester. I did put my um, email in the chat if you uh, need to contact us uh, for any reason, answer any questions. Um, so have a great, great day um, and uh, weekend. Take care. Okay.